So this guy just came in in an agent offer. And the reason I'm showing you this is because one, he's called Roman Macek and it just reminded me of the wonderful Roman Macek. And two, because his picture looks like something out of a high school yearbook and I'm really enjoying that. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with FC Midgeland and the final normal episode of the season. Now, if you have been enjoying the series and you've enjoyed this first season of Building a Nation, then do drop a like on the video. If we could get seven, eight hundred, that'd be fantastic as well. Now, obviously, you come to this episode for one reason, that is to see if we manage to win the league. Now, without any further ado, we're not going to beat around the bush. Let's get into some highlights and see what's happened. Can he find a shot? He's going to get into the box here. He might get a shot away as well. Cadlets all the way through. Oh, what a hit that is from Václav Cadlets. Incredible start. We're trying a new system today, and it seems to be working quite nicely. 1-0. First time we've scored against them this season. The channel for Roy Air. Lovely ball. Oh, my goodness. Lovely football. And we're 2-0 up against AGF, a team we haven't scored against all season. And it was then the 7 above Randers. What about that? 2-0. Dominated possession. Dominated the match. Fantastic result. Back for sister, a bit more space now. Can he find the cross in? He can! Julian's in there and it is 1-0 at Hobro. And we are inching closer towards that title with these victories now. Things are going very, very well for us. So short for Doolan. This is nice football again. Poulsen. Shot maybe? No. Sing. Slips it through. And it's in the back of the net from Poulsen. Lovely work in this second half. It's 2-0 Michelin again. And we are sort of rolling towards the title now. It's looking good. Finds it into the space. Cadillacs is through. Can he finish? Yes, he can. It's 3-0 now. We're looking very, very good. Cadillacs with his 28th goal of the season. Great assist from Solvi. Well, there we go. 3-0. Very, very good. Tactical changes are working a treat. Some stepping up. Scoring the penalty. And it is Midjalan 1. Sodayuska 0. Looks in behind for Cadillacs. Lovely play. He's going to take the shot on surely. And he scored. Brilliant counter-attacking play. It's 2-0-0. Vatslav Cadillacs. Our fifth good chance of that first half. There's more in this game for us, I sense. Madsen's through. And they've got one back, because of course they have. Unbelievable. Um, no matter what you do, sometimes you're going to concede, I think. There you go, 2-1. Probably our best performance stat-wise since we changed the tactic, but our worst performance on the pitch. But there you go, 2-1. Oh, good chance for a ball across. Ishak's in there, and it is 1-0 to Randers. We need to get... If we can get a point here, we're champions. We should really try and, you know, do that bit. Before he goes past his man again. He is having a lovely time there. Ishak in and it's 2-0 now to Randers. They've had two shots on target and they've scored both of them. Fair play. Clinical. Novak. Oh, it's gone in. I don't know who that's gone in off of. Budarov maybe? No, it's a Jonsson own goal. We've got to go back here. Kind of deservedly so, I'd say. Can we get the one that could win us the title? Well, there you go. 2-1. I think we played well enough on the night to maybe get a little bit more, but we'll just have to try and win the title another time. got the pace but there's a lot of players surging into the box here one of them is Doolan back post 1-0 and there we have it we've got the lead it doesn't actually matter because Kerben Harvin lost earlier in the day so we are champions no matter what happens but it'd be nice to win the game anyway well there we go a really solid away win against a really good side who we failed to beat in the cup final so as you can see we managed it uh, we're actually nine points above the teams below us at the moment which is quite cool we can finish nine points clear it's just the way things have sort of turned out in the end they've sort of spluttered and dropped points as well as have we away at Randers. but we definitely looked a lot better in some of the other games and i want to talk to you guys a little bit about why but we'll actually come on to that in a sec once we get into the tactics screen so i can show you kind of what i've been doing uh, with tactics and stuff based on the suggestions you guys gave me a couple of episodes ago which have been godly right so i decided to take you through a little bit of the low knees and kind of what they've actually been up to uh, since it's the last game of the season it's something i might do in every single game uh, on the last day of the season just so we can take a little look at who's out on loan and who's doing what now obviously there's a few players that are out on loan uh, at brentford at the moment because i think they were already there or uh, it was an automatic thing because of our affiliate agreement which i had forgot to have control over so Looking at them at the moment, best average rating over on loan is uh, Babahide David, who's at Thisted FC, who's done a really good job this year, and I can't wait to get him back, because I think he could be crucial for us next year. Marco Larson um, and Jonas Gemma also had relatively good seasons, but as did Razak Adebayo with 11 goals, so not too bad. That's who's out on loan. Obviously, this list will grow and grow and grow as we start to bring in the regens and get them out on loan a lot, so this is going to be an important one as we can see the growth of the teams around us, basically, via this list as well. 
as you can see, Cadlets is onto 29 goals. He needs one more to hit the big 30, which is my target for him at the start of the year based on how well he started. And I think he's capable of doing it against a team like Norgeland, particularly at home. So hopefully he can do that today, particularly with the new tactic we're playing. It should give him ample opportunity to do so. Pusic has got himself 13 goals in 14 starts. It really is not too shabby as well. And he might get more of a game time as well uh, because he can play in so many different positions, particularly in the new style of tactics. Sisto as well, after coming back from injury, eight goals, nine assists. Next year, I want to see double that. And I feel like we'll probably get that from him as as well. Now, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about the idea of an analysis video, and I just wanted to clarify a few things about that. Basically, I think some people got the wrong idea in that it was going to be a video that replaced the normal video for that day. That's not what I do. You still get a normal episode like you would do. And then the later that day, you get the analysis video as an extra thing for anyone that wants to watch it, basically. So there's no stop in the normal episodes. It's just something added. Uh, in fact, I'm going to call it added time uh, for those of you that want to watch it. And it will be at nine o'clock tonight after this video. So that way, um, there'll still be a normal video tomorrow and nothing changes. It's just extra footage. It's not, a, I never take anything away when I do stuff like that. I only add things. This first season uh, transfer window might be a little bit subdued uh, because we've not got that many players and that much budget uh, that we can really work for. Because at the end of the season, we only got a budget of 1.6 million in our transfer kitty for next summer we'll still be able to pick up some players but it's going to be much more difficult however the summers after that are going to be action-packed and the reason for that is because someone suggested something in the comments and i kind of agree with them here the, the fact is we're relying on our scouts to find these good players when really we should just be looking and scouting every single youth intake and the fact is we've probably got enough time to do that when they come through because that's all we're looking for we don't need scouts looking for players that aren't in there so in theory we should just be able to dominate all our energy on scouting every single youth intake player that comes through you know get a scout report on every single one of them if they look half decent add them to the shortlist and scout them a little bit more if they don't discard them it's just one of those things and i'm actually going to try and do that so every single scout report uh, every single youth intake that comes through from now on there wasn't any in may so far which sucks because i didn't get a chance to try it i'm going to basically go and send scouts out to look at every single player that way we don't miss any and if we do it won't be because of that it'll just be because the scouts were bad or i was bad that way there's no excuses and we can really pick up some quality obviously they'll find players that are just well out of our league but at least we've got them scouted so we know that so that's what i'm going to be doing from now on which means that we'll be probably signing players throughout the seasons rather than just all doing it in the summer, which I think should make the season certainly more interesting as well. But that will also mean that I can do transfer specials then because we'll know exactly who we're going after. Whereas the reason I don't like doing them is because I generally do a transfer window while I'm working. That way I don't have to record stuff. I can be working on one screen and doing stuff on the other screen because... I spend such a long time doing it because I actually have to look for the players with Wimbledon, whereas this time we'll already have them set and ready to go. With Wimbledon, I still had some there, obviously, but it was a lot more looking and it was just boring stuff that I didn't really feel the need to record, which is why I feel like we should be able to get transfer specials out of this new series. Um, this first one in the summer might be a little bit subdued, as I said, but going forward, it should be a really, really fun time for all. Right, so these, I've got two tactics because I was suggested an idea of basically saying, you know, if you're going to be the dominant team and the team are playing a certain tactic, drop that defensive midfielder, put him back up in there, and we're playing him as a Trek Batista today, which is where Sobby comes into the comes into the fold, so to speak. And I think it's going to work quite nicely. Singh is now a box-to-box -box midfielder. We've got Sisto as an inside forward, which I'd already done, of course, uh, before we got the advice on that one. Defences stay the same, but we've put some the defenders on cover instead because that seemed to have an effect, and the goalkeeper is now a sweeper-keeper. Other changes include the fact that we're now looking for the overlap, and I think that's the only real change I made there. Now, we've got a different... This is our sort of attacking a formation idea with the Trek Batista in there. Then we've also got a DM formation of the formation that has um, a defensive midfielder. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with that role yet. I thought about Regista. Mm, still not sure. And that has the same kind of things. The only difference is the uh, positioning with the defensive midfielder. So that's what we've got. We've got two ideas for the tactic, but today we're going to go with this one. Interesting to note that Norgeland are actually playing an almost identical formation to us. So this could be a case of the, um, the unstoppable force versus the immovable object, except I sense that we're going to be a little bit more unstoppable than they are. As for what's going to be in that analysis video, basically it will be stuff like we're going through all the stats, looking at where the team is doing well, where it isn't, and stuff like that. Obviously, the first season it's really difficult because we've changed the tactics so much. The other thing that will be in there is things like a squad report where we go through and look at the individual attributes of every player in the team as well, just so you guys can get an idea of who's improving, who's not, and stuff like that as well. So that's what's going to be in that. Ramon. We've actually started this game really strongly. A couple of shots. Not seen any highlights of any shots, but we're getting a bit more possession as well, which is nicely. Roma. Sobby. Oh, Sisto into the channel. He's got the pace, but he's not fully fit. He needs to find that cross. Oh, he's going to go alone. No, nope. finds Cadillac. Brings it down. What a save or block or whatever. Um, Cadillac maybe could have done with that. It wasn't the best cross, I don't think. It looked like it was at an awkward height for him. It's a shame because he could have really done with that goal to get him up to 30 for the season and get him onto 21 in the league, which is kind of important because that would tie in for top scorer. Sisto now looks out to Cadlets, though. I think he's got a goal in him today, Cadlets. He looks hungry for it. Cuts inside. Finds Hansen and Hansen puts it in instead. Well, he might not have got a goal, but he does have an assist and Key and Hansen makes it 1-0 to Midgeland. And at this rate, we'll actually finish 11 points clear at the top of the league. The season seems to have been like an elastic band at times. And what I mean by that is that we've sort of, we got an extended, a hugely extended lead and then it sort of got roped back and then we started to get really, really tight and we've just sort of 
flushed it out a again a little bit at the end of the season. And I think this new tactic has certainly helped with that. It's going to enable us to win like four of our last five games with it. So that's pretty damn solid, I'd have to say. Roma's throw into Sobit. Oh, can he get the ball in? Oh, it's a penalty. It has to be. There's got to be a penalty. We've started this game so strongly. Lots of shots, lots of chances as well. Not too many long shots as well, which helps. And we've limited them to only one shot. And also, amazingly, we've got 56% possession in this game. I might actually be tempted to switch it to control in the second half, something I don't do very often. I did it against AGF, though, because they allowed us so much ball. I think at one point we were having 67, 68% possession in that game. Poulsen up and an absolutely thunderous strike from um, Jacob Poulsen, his eighth goal of the season. And I think seven of those have been penalties. I don't think he's missed one this season. He's been dominant in that spot. Really, really pleased with him. Uh, we've won quite a few penalties this year as well. Uh, he's turned up on the old average ratings for the season as well in the place of Olsen, who, of course, we will have back next year. And he can play in that AMC role. So... There's a lot of things looking promising. Obviously, I'm not sure how many of the players that we're going to bring in in the summer and forward will actually fit straight in. The Nigerian guy uh, should do. I think he can actually go straight into the team. Cadlets, round the side for Sobby. Takes a touch. Can he... Oh, what are you doing, Sobby? Do, don't make me give you a sock. That was terrible. He just seemed to... I know, there was a pass on, right? Cadlets on the edge of the box again. They're not getting out to close him down very well, are they? Cadlets with the strike. Cadlets with the strike. Um, yeah, we're peppering. Peppering would probably be the right word for this at the moment. Well, there's more. There's more. Novak comes back out to... I don't know why that... Why didn't Poulsen just leave that? Sing. I want to see Sing score another long shot. He's not scored one since right at the start of the season. Sobhi. Round the side for Julian. and can we get a good cross here? And we can. Sisto back post and it is 2-0. And um, we are starting to... Oh, sorry. 3-0. My bad. 3-0. Of course we got the penalty, didn't we? 3-0 inside the first half against Norgelan. And it looks like we're doing Obro a favour. Um, because if they can pull their fingers out against Vibor, we might be able to help them stay in the league. Because uh, it does look like Norgelan are pretty woeful at the moment. Sister went at the back post, and that's 3-0. Uh, maybe we could be on for our best result of the season today. That'd be pretty ideal, really, wouldn't it? We're oh my goodness, we're playing some good stuff so far, I sense. Look at that. Oh, Julian, what a touch. Sister, oh, wow. That would have been a perfect, I mean, very, very lucky goal, albeit, but a great goal nonetheless. We've had over 20 shots in this first half, and it's not like we've, you know, we've still hit the target with nine of them. That's still a decent return. Um, Sobby, look at the support he's got. Finds Poulsen. Julian's out wide. There's lots more players to make these runs. Sisto inside. Sisto's through, and Sisto doesn't score because it's an incredible save from Jensen. But what a first half performance. This is like, we're basically playing them as if they're a lower league side at this rate, and we, we actually played a lot worse against the third tier team earlier in the season. That's how bad Norgeland have been today. They're almost playing like they want to get relegated. It's like they don't want to be in that 14-team league next year. They don't want that chance of getting Europe. So I've noticed we're completing quite a few crosses in this game. Uh, most of our key passes are here, but we are getting in behind with the crosses. So I wonder if exporting the flanks might not be such a bad idea for this second half. Um, just drop that tempo down a touch and get going with things after that, I think. Because, you know, we've already got a 3-0 lead. If we can grab ourselves ourselves a, ourselves a fourth and maybe even a fifth goal that'll be pretty damn sweet because i don't know if he scored five goals in a game this season in any game we've had a few four ones or a couple of them i don't think we've even had a four nil so i think our biggest winning margin is three goals so it'd be nice to see if we could smash that today and finish off the season with a bit more of a flourish which is surprising considering the amount of injuries we've had this year novak ah, he's gone through him there that was bad philip what are you doing right i changed my free kick tactic to put men on the posts that's weird Oh, I know what's happened. I think I probably changed it before I did the tactical setup, and it might be on the other tactic. That's a bit silly of me. I'll have to sort that out for next season. Lovely ball from Poulsen up to Cadlets. He's got support, but it's not quite arriving yet, and Petri has fouled him. He's won a free kick. Lovely old job. Just going to nudge the tempo down a little bit more and tell him to concentrate as well, because I feel like that might be an area where they're just starting to get not enough shots on target now. It's starting to get a little bit lackadaisical on that front. Going to get some quick changes on Singh, Poulsen and Sisto off, Onkan Royer, Spav, and we're going to get cut on Kadanen, uh, just because I like the lad. I feel like he's got some potential in him. People have told me he's a good player, so I want to see if we can get him a bit more game time coming up, basically. And just another note with those um, uh, analysis videos, basically. Honestly, guys, if you're not into them, that's totally cool, because it's only for the people that are, and you won't miss a thing to do with the actual series uh, by not watching them. So I don't want you to feel like it's something you have to watch, because they'll be quite long. I feel like they'll probably be at least half an hour. But it's just for those of you that really want to see that type of thing, um, because I like to try and cater. I wanted to try and have a nice snappy save, but at the same time, have those episodes where people that are interested in that sort of stuff are still catered to. Mickelson. Ball in. Oh, what a save. What a save. But again, you know, that could have easily been a goal, and it would have been like but they've actually had a few more chances in this second period, to be fair to them. Well, there we go. I mean, it looks like it's going to be 3-0. Plenty of chances, plenty of shots. Look at that. We really should have had a couple more, but at least we got three. 3-0 three being the key part of that for me, frankly. And we're going to finish the season with 65 goals scored, 28 conceded, a plus 37 goal difference as well. And uh, Copenhagen did eventually leapfrog Randers on the final day, I think, with a 0-0 draw. Um, 
interestingly. So they really have made it quite easy for us towards the end, it seems. Now, we've been given another £2.16 million, pounds, which is quite cool. We got £8 million or something from the uh, television money, uh, money for the Champions League. So that actually leaves our... Um, sort of finance is looking quite decent overall balance of nine million 15 million pound profit this year which is delightful um one of my issues though is the fact that the board because all this money comes in after they set our expectations we might have to ask for more money in the summer see if they're available to do that or just accept the transfer budget as it is and plow more of that money into youth facilities since they're costing us a fortune as well plus we're paying back a loan as well so i think there's a lot of things that could cause uh, the team to gain a lot more money next season than this year particularly once we start bringing in some players i cannot wait for that i really really can't so guys if you have enjoyed this season and i really hope you have we've won the league we've got to the cup final got to the champions league group stages and i'm ready to do it all again next year but ready with a lot more interesting stuff particularly with the regens coming through it's going to be fantastic i'm going to start scouting every single intake uh, to see what we can pick up but also go after some of the players we'd already had a look at that's that's going to be my little scout list for the summer basically to try and pick up some of those guys and you'll obviously see me go after them as well i'm going to try and show that since we've got a really small group of them at the moment but yeah if you have enjoyed it smash the like button that'd be fantastic if we could get 800 that'd be really really cool as well and if you are new to the channel and you haven't already do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at seven o'clock and i will join you guys in the next episode uh for transfer goodies as well as the first game of the season which will no doubt be champions league as well as um, an analysis video later tonight for those of you that are interested in that and I'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching bye bye